Now, if you fancy a sweet treat, look no further. Joe Shannon is on Kitchen Judy's this morning. What are you making for us, Joe? Well, I thought, Alan, we would do another little bit of baking, so I thought a beautiful summer compote cake. And, okay. or bake, uh, I suppose it would be the right sort of terminology of it. And it's just something, you know, with prices and stuff like that, it's something if you want to use fresh berries, then you can. But if you want to make a cheaper alternative, frozen you can ones. use frozen berries. Right, Absolutely okay. no problem. So very simply, Alan, what I've done, I have started to cream some, some butter and some sugar. All right, now mm -hmm. you can use a good quality margarine if you want as well, if you want to save on the price. Just remember, if your butter's too hard, leave it out for a while to soften because it's, it's just too hard to work. When it's yeah. too hard, you, won't, you just won't mix with it, right? I've already added two eggs. We need three eggs in total, so just so we won't have too much noise, we'll go in with a third egg. All right, give it a good mix. You want to cream your butter and your sugar for about 10 minutes, literally, uh, when you're doing the mix uh, at home. And then what we do, very simply, is we add our dry ingredients, which I have 200 grams of plain flour, and I've added basically two teaspoons of uh, baking powder to that. I have 50 grams of almonds to that, very, very simply. And then we just give that a nice little mix, just like so. And what we have is like a batter mix. All right, All very, right. very simple. And if that mixture is too stiff, just add a little bit of milk to it, maybe about two or three teaspoons of milk, just into that. All right. And it will loosen it up nicely. All right. Mm -hmm. So that goes along nicely, just like that. So. And then what I have, I have pre-prepared a 20 by 20 centimetre cake tin. If you see that here? Yeah. And I've greased that because we don't want it to stick into it when it's cooked, so we won't be able to take it out. So this very simply goes in the top, so it's just lined with some greaseproof paper. Our mixture goes in on top of that there. Very, very simple. And this will rise when it's cooking, because we're going to cook it in an oven of 160 degrees of a fan oven or 180 degrees of a non-fan oven. All right. Spread it along there very, very simply. Okay. And then what we do is I have pre-prepared some frozen berries, about 200 grams of frozen berries. What kind of berries? They're what mixed. You can buy actually a pack um, of mixed frozen yeah. berries. And you can use them straight from the freezer, which is great. So I literally, yes, they put this into a pot. You can do this the day beforehand. Boil it down with 100 grams of sugar, maybe a teaspoon of, of water until you get a nice sort of jam consistency in it. Oh, so right. you're not, they're not the full berries then? They're not they like... They are actually, they actually... But no, but I mean, you're, 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 you're condensing it. You're not yeah, going to let the it's going down like a jam, yeah. Right, yeah. And then what also, if you don't want to do that process, you can buy a good quality jam, if, if you so wish, and just use it, a nice berry jam. And what we do is, we just sort of dabble that over the top of our, our cake mixture. All right. And I put a, a vanilla pod in there as well, now, that's completely up to yourself because they can be quite expensive, but they do add a great flavour. Or you yeah, can maybe put a bit of a vanilla so. essence in, into yeah. it as well. All right, so you get the idea. And then what we do, very simply, is I took some frozen berries again, just with, do nothing with them. Oh, so you have to. And just the spread them on top. Well, just to, yeah. just okay. add for a textural wise, all right? No problem at all. Nice bit of a bite into it. Nice, nice bit of a bite. And then for our topping, what I have is we can use the same bowl. I have 25 grams of butter or margarine again. All right. I have 25 grams of sugar. I have 25 grams of flour. And you want to go in, really, you know, make sure your hands are clean. Go in with your fingers. Get that working, just like so. All right. And then you're sort of, it's sort of no, more, no, no more like a crumble mix. All oh, right. It's a crumble on top of it then, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And what you don't have to get too worried about mixing this really, really like a fine breadcrumb. Lumps of butter in it is fine, no problem. And I finish it off with some lovely flaked almonds that go in there. We just remove our spoon. And this then, basically, you just place that mixture all over the top, just like so. Would okay. it be as rough as that? Yeah? As rough as that, oh, absolutely. Because wow. okay. the butter will melt down, Alan, in the oven. Of course, yeah. yeah. And as simple as that, and what we do then, we place that into our lovely Becker oven for, as I say, 160 degrees on fan, 180 degrees on a non-fan oven, and for you're going long? to need about 45 minutes for it to oh, cook. Oh, wow, that's long, isn't it? It is, yeah. And it's always good to cook the day beforehand, and when you take it out, let it settle in the tin before you try to remove it. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. Because otherwise, it'll, it'll break up, you know, when it comes straight out of the yeah. oven. <clears throat> and what you're left with is, basically, I put them up into bite-sized pieces like that, but if you wanted it as a, as a dessert, it's beautiful, a bit of custard straight out of the oven. You know what I mean? Oh, after... yes, a bit of custard. Yeah. Ah. And see what you think. I wonder would Miriam love one of them, would she? Oh, there she is. Like... <laughs> would you like some cake?
life. I was making we a cup a, of tea. We have a pot of tea here for you. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. Do you want a cup of tea? No, hold on. I'll just pour my, from my dodgy cup into the nice cup. OK. I'll <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show the dodgy cup, everybody. You're not allowed. So what do you think, Adam? They're lovely. It's just very simple. And again, they're ideal for freezing. If you wanted to make a batch of them and freeze them down, again, no problem. I can at all. Mm. Almond. Is there an almond in it? Yeah, there we have in the mixture. There's a right. 50 You have a good taste buds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have only 50 grams of almonds in it. But uh, uh, it's when yeah. you do this, when he does this, is there um, mm. is there some almonds? And the other thing is, if you are allergic to nuts, just remember, leave the almonds out and replace it with 50 grams of flour. And you'll have a, just like a Madeira mix going, going in as opposed to, you know, the almonds. And leave the almonds out of the topping as well. You know, this something. So is is divine. It's lovely. Yeah. So it's a nice summer. Also, sort of every household in Ireland I know, has yeah. this pattern. Yeah, yeah. Like, was it a thing? Did it come free? Did you collect well, no, what happened with us is we got a couple, and we got married 31 years ago. We got a load of china sets. At that time, everyone gave you presents. Yes. So yeah. it was a china set or a lamp. So we got a load of china sets. And it was beautiful. And, and the other one we used to get was knives and forks. Oh, yes, yeah, uh, cock, uh, cock, cock reset, which is beautiful. Your canteen of cutlery. I got so many of them when I got engaged. Uh, can I just say? <laughs> and there's only two of us in the house. We're just, we, don't, cutlery. we don't wash cutlery anymore. I've got so and many. Everyone, used, every, everyone used to pass the <laughs> presents you, on then everyone. to other people. So it was the same round of presents that was going round to all the way. <laughs> the re gifting. The re gifting. <laughs> the re gifting and Sligo is great. Everybody ends up getting their own presents back. Can I just say, I'm delighted to announce I was invited yesterday to sing at the Sligo Summer Festival, which will be in front of 5,000 people on the 4th of August. So that's, you know, there must be stuff for singers and they have me to there. But sing! <laughs> sing! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, a Kieran Quinn night. Kieran Quinn is a, a fantastic arranger, musician, and, and he promotes all things uh, Sligo musical-wise. And he has a series of concerts throughout the year, and he's invited me just because of my cancer story to promote it, but he's a great guy. So this is one of his huge concerts now. And this will be 5,000 people in Stephen Street car park on the 4th of August. And I'm going to be up there doing rock and all over the world. So... <laughs> and I like it, yeah, I like yeah. it, Here we are, here we are. Here we are. Huh? Who else? Not, 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 it's all, no, sorry, on, on the night, and this is the beauty of it, it's all local talent. So it's not a case of... Oh. Promoting big names. Karen promotes local talent and no. Everyone that's there. Well, Everybody listen, be there to see Joe. Joe Shannon yeah. sings. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us this morning, Joe. That's fantastic. Now it's time for a quick break after we, we didn't know that was happening. After this, we head back to beautiful County Mayo where Derek's getting a closer look at the Black Sod Lighthouse. We'll see you after this.